Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to another over the board analysis video. I know you've been waiting for this for like six months, but it's finally happening, and we have a special guest, Pavlikich. That's Pavlikic, and he did the he, he did the he did the commentary. <laughs> he did the commentary for the live. Part. And then the vlog. If you watch the vlog, go watch the vlog. It's really good. Um, but otherwise, let's just jump into it. All right, make it go. All, All right. right. All right. So you played d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g. Fuck. I think you played g3 against Daniel. That's what happened. Yes. Okay. You're correct. Okay. That's what you prepped for, I think. That's why you were out of prep early here. Probably. I was also probably out of prep because I didn't have any prep, and I looked at like one main line in every opening, and then I was like, "That's yeah. good enough." Um, it's not. Don't do. Don't be like me. You know. Actually, actually, try. It's good to try. D five. Uh, I don't know. Influences the center. Um, <laughs> G3. It's the opening. I don't know what. Yeah, we do a bit of skipping through the opening because it's not so important. All right, we have a few arrows. Presumably, what you thought my options were at the time. Yeah, that's like book moves, main book moves. Cool. Um. Yeah, I don't know much about taking on C4, like and trying to hang onto the pawn. Like, I don't understand how to do that shit at all. Um, and I play this with white, and I tend to be very happy when they try and hang on to the pawn. Mm -hmm. So, it's not something I really seriously considered, I don't think. Uh, also, I should say that my whole goal for this tournament was to play normal moves quickly. Meaning that I was not calculating moves that can just be justified verbally by saying, like, this move influences the center, this move develops a piece. You know, like, no overthinking was my goal. Yep. Goal was to have like a nice a vacation, yeah. You had, like, a time limit for every move, right? That's right. I had, I wanted to spend three to seven minutes, I think, on every yeah. move, unless it's a critical position. Then I was spending 10 to 15. Yeah. Um, which I believe I, I learned from... Uh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm having a moment. Shit. I don't know who was it. Uh, Buddy Sabina. Ah, yes. Which Indeed. she was... Or maybe Dina... I, uh, Sabina was talking no, about Dina. it, but I yeah I want to okay. This is too much exposition. All right, knight d seven. Sorry. Knight c three. That's the cut. Right. Cut. Cut. Yeah. Uh, take. I think maybe like because he commits his knight to c three, it made sense to me now to take on c four because now knight d two takes c four is not possible, and queen c two takes c four not possible. Yeah. Probably. Free tempo. Right, right. Okay, and e4, and then I remember this position being very confusing to me because it's not a structure I've ever had in a game. Mm -hmm. um, and I tend to get very nervous when people just push their center pawns at me. Like, it doesn't make a whole lot of, like, it just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, e5 is coming. You cannot play e5 yourself. It's very scary it is scary and it's like self-service principle as they say like it's my cool. opponent wants to play e5 and i also want to play e5 mm -hmm. um but okay apparently i played c6 i guess to stop d5 and also to support my my buddy on c4 yeah probably it makes sense I would see maybe c5 as being an alternative. Yeah, I think but if, if you want to go for b5, you go a6 first, no? That makes sense, because I have to be able to play b5, so a6 um, to support this break. Yeah. And support it a different way. Um, but I also like c5. Th this would require so much thought, and I don't think I would be 
comfortable thinking about this position for seven minutes and making a move. Um, which is not an ideal way to think about a chess position. But again, like I had a specific goal for this tournament and um, it's something to analyze later, but like this looks, th this position is not natural looking to me at all. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just me or like if it's just a hard position. It is, like your pieces are sort of lumsy. They have no space. Yeah, lack of space is like so uncomfortable, I think. Um, I feel like only really good players truly understand when it's okay to not have space, and I'm not one of them. Yeah. I mean, it's a skill that develops for so long. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Just like, like experience and feeling positions out. Yeah. Like being resilient is so tough. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, resilience in closed positions, or I guess positions with no space, you have to just, like... We have to grow. It's so slow, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bye-bye, Earl. Bye-bye. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Earl's the DGT man. We like Earl. Alright, A4. Go Earl. Go, Earl! A4 stopping B5, or at least attempting to do so. Um, it makes sense, like, these are kind of auto-response moves. Um, apparently I played e5 here. Yes. And I, sp I sp apparently I spent under seven minutes on that move. Um. Yeah, let me, you spent three minutes. Three minutes, wow. Look at me go, making such a committal move. Um, it's the top move in the database, interestingly. Yes. You played theory up until you didn't. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, that tends to be how it goes. Um, I guess c6 prepared e5 was my intention. Um, to make... I don't know. I don't know. Let me, let me analyze for a minute. So I, if I play e5 right away, uh, it says takes... Knight e8, knight d5. So maybe that was my point. And if I go here... I'm just never picking up- Oh, maybe it was to play c6, queen a5. Maybe that was my point. Oh, I understand. Sorry, I had to refresh myself. I think Could c6 be. is opening up the dark squares to further attack the e-pawn. And it's- I mean, turn this off. And it's true. It's- it's the best way to play. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's such a cool feeling, like being able to feel out of like a pawn structure you've literally never played before in your life and just making normal looking moves and it ends up being okay. Yeah, and not spending like 30 minutes on it. Uber, yeah, uber time like I usually do. Yeah. Um, right, knight g4. Attacking the pawn. He defends yeah. it. Now we got... Two boys, he has two boys. We add a third, perhaps. And Boy. a third, yes, yes. So maybe we stop here for a minute, because I remember he played a strange move here, and then I immediately blundered. Yeah. He tried defending the pawn again. Yeah, like, these are all things that you can just, like, if you just strip it down to, like, the bare... Uh... <laughs> verbal... Like, if you try and uh, evaluate this position just with, like, little little buzzwords, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, two, three, and then he adds three as well. So, you know, maybe add, maybe add a fourth, but you can't, so maybe try and get rid of one. Yes. But I looked at this position and was like, that queen looks fucking stupid. It's like nearly trapped. I want to get it. Yeah. But he's also attacking one of your dudes. He's he's attacking my C pawn, which actually I think in the game I almost missed. Um not that not that I can really do much about it. Um the thing is if he takes on C4, then I can take on E5 because, you know, minus 1. Yes. That's chess. 
That's the but, um, that is the fault, yeah. Uh, but, okay. I remember queen d4 was not the best move, right? It was like... Okay, computer liked e6 here? Yes. And queen d4 I thought was actually not a bad move, but... I think if I respond correctly, it is. Yeah. Okay. So the point behind e6, by the way, is you're kind of just saying like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend time defending this pawn anymore. I want to mess up your pawn structure um, and give you a permanent weakness on e6 to attack. And now you have. Weaken, weaken the diagonal, the light squares. Um, maybe like weaken the dark squares at some point. Who knows? Like maybe bring a knight in. Um, and just creating imbalances in the position. Like yes, black is temporarily up a pawn, but now has lots of jobs to do. And um, when you when you give your opponent so many little jobs to do, like eventually they kind of, they're not you know, unless you're playing fall Magnus apart. Carlsen, as they say, yeah, they'll fall apart. Or what, what does Yasser say? Like, you make like, I don't know if it's his quote, but I've heard him say it. Um, if you just like make a a, th a threat ten moves in a row, like by the tenth move, yeah. you're opponent will will blunder collapse yeah yeah and it's it's reasonable it's definitely a reasonable strategy um Defending especially is hard. it is and psychologically too it's difficult yeah um you just get tired like that's stamina is so important in chess uh Pavlikic and i were talking about this uh about how walking helps so much when playing a chess game and like just standing up and walking around makes you feel so much less stuck and in your own head um, than if you're sitting at the board the entire time. Yeah, and when you're defending, you feel less free to walk. It's it is it's true. Like it's and you have to recognize these things. I think sometimes, like if you're you have a kind of a bad position and you're defending, you feel stuck. Like. Maybe like get up and drink some water and walk around and realize that like that that game is not like your entire life and like if you if you die in the game you don't die for real. Yeah. Um, mm. And also maybe the position isn't that bad. Yeah, perspective. Because like you look around, you go to the reserve section and you see some guy <laughs> playing on down like a bishop and two queens, and you're like, okay, well. Yeah. But and then and then the guy gets stalemated, and you're like, wow, like. I'm only down a pawn, you know? Yeah. There's hope. There's always hope. This is chess and and, and psychology with All the fans. Mm-hmm. What's the fans? Fans lose minds, dude. <laughs> fans lose minds. Okay, so rook d eight is a much better move because it's 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 one of those things I played knight b six, which is not very good. My in intention was to play knight b six and rook d eight and just like trap the queen. Um However, there was a big problem with this. Um, the reason, like, even without calculating and seeing what I missed, that you should just play rook d8 first is because it's a move that you know you're going to play regardless. Rooks belong on open files. Yeah. So oftentimes when you're debating between two moves, if you can, if you can narrow it down to one is, is, is kind of automatic, as they say, Play that one first, and then figure it out later. Yeah. So. But knight b6, I was expecting queen d1. And I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> and then he went queen d2, and I was like, oh, shit. He just, like, developed his queen with a tempo. Like, that would be, like... Basically, what happened is he played queen d2, and then I put my knight on a stupid square. And then it's his turn. Um... And that's exactly what happened. For some reason, like it because I'm not thinking very long, I just I only considered one move and that was it. My position sucked. After rook d eight, like he really only has like a computer line. 
to save him. Oh, walk us through the computer line. I don't know about this yet. So, it goes knight d5. Oh boy. Um, okay. <laughs> what? What? It's hard to understand. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to figure out the point. Oops, I'm very yeah. slow. I don't understand. Take free piece. He gets big center. Yeah. You get tempo. Tempo. He take pawn. Okay. You tempo. Tempo. Black's breaking out with tempo. Um, so and he's like so attacking. <laughs> And your knight is gonna die, probably. And you're saying this is the only way for white to not have to a disadvantage? To not be worse after rook d8, I think. All right. But I'm a bit... It's fine. kind of strange, actually, because I was going to say, like, black has to find, like, this this line. Um. Well, it's either this or just take the pawn immediately. And taking the pawn like is clearly bad because, uh, as we said, like it just hangs, it just hangs yeah. the e pawn, and our rook's exactly. already on d8. Yeah, like you're way, way more developed, and you're probably gonna get bishop e6. Then. Bishop e6 is very nice, especially if it comes with another tempo. Although it's yeah. unlikely. Yeah, but yeah. he probably puts queen e2. Yeah, queen e2. It's still technically a tempo because he has to do something about the bishop c4 threat, which is now covered yeah. by the knight. So, developing, like, that was Black's biggest problem, and now all of a sudden it's, like, yeah. not even an issue. Exactly. So if he does go for this line of... So uh, he needs to correct line. correctly evaluate that he needs to find something important. But, like, this line, is not... It's ridiculous. And now you're like... Yeah, none of none of this is 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 obvious at all to me. Like, like it, it's ridiculous. Like it's typical computer. It feels like you give up a piece to develop Black's pieces. Yeah, it's weird. Very strange. Hello, Z villain. Thank you for the twenty-one months. But hey. alas. Okay. Hello. Very good. Surely, opponent thought about all of this. I I. No, no one in the room thought about any of this. Like, this was, this was, yeah. Um, first of all, I played a terrible move. Knight b6 is just like heinous. Not you gave that novelty. I'm sure yes. it was. It it um, is a novelty. That's a very generous you. mark. <laughs> it's a it's you played theory until you didn't. So. Yeah, novelty. Yeah. Yeah, and then he went queen d2, and I I felt extremely stupid and sad. Because, like, I'm not def I'm not attacking this anymore. Yeah. If I go back, like, he just he just won a tempo. Um, and otherwise, like, my queen is now boxed in. My queen has, like, no squares. My knight has no ambitions from b6. It just, it's just stupid. Yeah. Um, sure, I could play rook d8 and get a tempo on the queen, but I just could have done that in the first place, so it really doesn't make any sense. And basically, fans were in shambles at this point. Sad. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't I I can't imagine what the the fans were saying at this point. They were probably not saying nice things about me, but that's okay because I deserved it. Um. Yeah, but it well it was good because it's the first time that you weren't down like an hour by move ten. Yeah, I mean, like you pick, <laughs> you pick your suffering, pick your like yeah. Like, it, it's like I was fine, like down upon fine. It's just it's it's sad, but it's better to be up on time and have a bad position sometimes than it is to be how I normally am. It's like, just like I'm just much much better, but I have two minutes. Like that's not not yeah. easy. Yes. Gal Lions. Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo! Fans lose minds. Uh, is h3 a problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. Because, like, okay, now now that I'm not attacking this, now my other knight is also stupid. Like, both of my knights are just are just terrible. And my, like, this position is, like, vomit-inducing, 
honestly. Um, the, yeah. the night... The night is bad. Um, it would take, like, a real, like, creative special mind to win this game, right? Oh, well, that's... No. Or a real lucky bitch. Oh, well, pick your poison, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the again. fans how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, but, H like... Yeah, yeah H3 is a problem, but there's not... I don't... What can you do, honestly? Heart sinks when when fans see doubled H pawns. Look, like in these, the, like ah, like ah, like I have it's no, annoying. I have ah, all my pieces are bad, and I have no development or space or position or time or life. Um. Anyway, time. Rook D8. What I mean, Finally. at least, at least I gotta do something. Yeah. Uh, but now. F six like the thing is I don't ha I don't I don't I'm zugged because this move this move ties my knight to the pawn which like further gimps my queen my yeah. I don't I don't H three is coming and I don't wanna I don't wanna double pawns in front of my king I'm out of options really fans wonder what computer thought about this position honestly. I if think even remember. here there was knight d5. That's what I'm looking. Really? Yeah. Instead of queen e2. Let me just. Yeah. Here, knight d5 violently winning. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. I remember this. Okay, wait. We glossed over that's this. Why I sh yeah, that's why I showed the other knight d5, I guess. I totally forgot. Okay, so. Queen, the queen is is uh, a little bit undefended here. Yeah, that's what you. Yeah. Knight d five. Lack of space for the queen. Yeah, there's no, there's really no room to retreat, and it's not even doing anything here anyway. Knight d five is an enormous threat along with h three. Knight d five being a threat because the queen is hanging, and there's going to be an intermezzo of ninety seven check before I recapture on d two. But the problem was that I didn't see a way to counter this um, in any reasonable way. Um, position is just bad. Like maybe I play... I remember playing rook d8 and saying I was going to sack the exchange maybe if here was my point. Yeah. But I knew that it didn't work um, because, you know, I'm defending the, the, the guy. Mm -hmm. Little puzzle storm. Yeah, but then maybe 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 this. No, that's stupid. Well, just take. Sorry. It. And then and then like this yeah, isn't good, but at least I'm not down a piece. Yeah, true, true. I mean, you maybe even trade the queens and take the pawn. Maybe. Mhm. Mm There's some comp. Honestly, I I remember feeling well, like I had pretty good chances here. Yes, a a five a five kills me. That's true. That's yeah, absolutely so you, right. So then you're forced to take with the knight here. Yeah, if I had an extra move, like my position wouldn't even be so bad. If I could play bishop e six, yes, um, and restrict the knight and. Well, okay, my knight... Uh, I take it back. My position would be so bad, but it wouldn't be quite as bad. Like, maybe I do this. Oops. Put a knight here or here. If he lets me reroute this knight, too, somehow. He's not gonna <laughs> let you. <laughs> Just yeah, give me, like, ten moves. Give Just... me ten moves and I can make this position playable. <laughs> yeah, that's how good it was. Yeah. But if somehow, like... I'm sure he saw it. He's he's a kid, so he likes tactics. I'm I I assume he talked himself out of it somehow, and I feel like Queen E two is probably a shock to us. He um, thought for twelve minutes. Um, if Knight E five take the Queen and King F eight. Uh, true. Um, but you still get a H. No, yes, and there's H three. There's h3. I feel like a5 is pretty strong, though. 
Mm -hmm. Or H3 first, you're right. H3 first, because then this doesn't come with a threat. Um, H3 and there's like a cute in the mezzo. This is an accurate back, move order, yeah. And you don't take the knight immediately. You play bishop g5 first check. Oh, shit. Because f6. Oh. Yeah. And you cannot retake. Take. Yeah, yeah. It's even worse than I thought. I just I I thought yeah. positionally it was just bad because I put my knight on a bad square and then I put my other knight on a bad square, and yeah. like I thought this is just a positional like like this is not good. So it's awful. It is. It is indeed. I didn't like, see how how bad it was, and if I had, then maybe I wouldn't be so I wouldn't have been so hopeful. So it's a good thing that I suck. Well, you played fast. That's the. Yeah, I was playing the, blitz. Yeah, that's the excuse we're gonna use often. Someone did their homework reviewing these games, and it's not Zep. Listen, buddy. That's why I'm here. <laughs> it's it's true. I for gore, but like. I also, I also had like, chat with a bunch of engines telling me what to think we, about. Pav had the insight on uh, like what the fans where the fans were at during the game <laughs> <laughs> what yeah it's just funny cool fans uh, lose minds fans lose minds uh engine chat best chat it's all true so f6 like yeah you just get me out of this position I, I can't imagine I calculated that for very long. It was I think it was a move I was just like, fuck this position. Yep. Um and I was just like, I'm I'm all done. I need I need squares for my pieces. And I yeah. need you to not I need you to not need to breathe. Yeah. So F six was, was me lashing out. Um but probably a good practical move. Yeah. Um because while the pawns are doubled in the center, there's not much I can do about it now. And I just need to activate my pieces. That's the only thing I can hope for. Yes. And honestly, it is a bit awkward for him. Like, he has this pace and everything, but he needs something concrete. Uh, it's not like his pieces are amazingly coordinated. Um, yeah, that's honestly, why fighting both sides that G5 was key. I think. Yeah, I guess it was. Like, I remember it just sort of started to slowly go downhill for him. And he, he yeah. played it late. Like, he played it at a really weird time. So I yes. feel like he knew he knew about it the whole time. He just talked himself out of it for a long time. And then yeah. got frustrated with his position and it wasn't getting better. And he just was like, fuck it, I'll just do it anyway. Even though it didn't work anymore. Yeah. It's but a okay. lesson, though. Good lesson for him. Mm -hmm. Every loss is a lesson, as they say. Yeah. Losing good. Losing is good. Alright. We take with the bishop. To make a th threat? Yeah. We double attack that the horse. And that's why he defended. This square is like semi... semi appealing. Slash Tender. extremely appealing. He just gave me like three moves, pew, pew. and then another four. Pew, 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 pew. That's the system. Yeah, a lot of arrows. I feel like this position. I don't know. Like, I'm looking at it now, and I don't remember playing it. But um, bishop e6, maybe, unless there's a threat I'm missing. Maybe a bit of knight e5. Who knows? Yeah. Cool. cool. I know myself. Yeah. Well. I yeah. Is there any issues with 95? I don't know. Is there an issue with bishop e6? It seems so much more natural. Bishop e6, I think, is better. Cool. <laughs> because this 95 is... Look at me. I've grown so much since then. Yeah. Well, it just makes more sense. Like, I'm developing a piece. I'm, like, freeing up the knight. I'm influencing exactly. the center. I'm closing the weak white square diagonal. Um... And with the knight, I'm just like moving a piece again that I've already moved twice. Yeah, that's that's. It's not the only thing that would happen there. 
What was I worried about if it should be six? Like, what's... Maybe I thought if I if I don't put my knight on e5, he'll play e5. Oh, that, that that's true. Yeah, maybe we needed a bit of a blockade. Um, I mean, I gotta charge. But maybe on, on e5, we go bishop e7. Oh, that's nice. Oh wait, I'm this is what she said. I'm silly. I thought he could go knight f6 after that. Well, this is true. Like, this doesn't even look... Well... Well... Yeah... I guess I was right. I... It, it also makes another square for his pieces. Like, I think it makes sense to blockade. I probably wanted to play bishop e6 and was uncomfortable with allowing e5. Yeah, I guess from a human point standpoint, it, it's well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Multi-purpose move. Yeah. Knight e5 is, is kind of, um, kind I mean, like, it's really more of a singular purpose move because it's just going to be taken, but if he doesn't yeah. take it, it's a great move. If he doesn't. Yeah. If he resigns, it's great. That's true. <laughs> then it's the best move. Yep. Um, ah, uh, yes, this was the issue. Yeah, I was just kind of yeah. fucked, honestly, like. Yeah, exactly. Like, what else do you do? <sighs> I think I missed this somehow. Like, I yeah. didn't even realize I was going down a pawn until it happened. Um, my calculation was not so good. It just also wasn't happening, but... Well, it, it's blitz calculation. Right, it's like if I don't see the puzzle rush tactic immediately, I'm not going to see it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the mass trade on e5 just allows a5 kicking off my only defender of the c-pawn. And I lose it with check. King h8 is like forced, I thought. And then, and then, my position is is horrible because, okay, I can't get my rook out until I get my bishop out. I can't get my bishop out until I get my knight out. I can't get my knight out until I get my rook defended. Um, so fans in shambles, honestly. Actual shambles. Down a pawn. Violently undeveloped. <laughs> <laughs> Zep puzzle rush cringe have puzzle storm based. That's true. <laughs> it's they're synonymous, you know. Like it's it's puzzle hurricane giga chad. Oh, wasn't that a thing? Really? Okay, I'm getting distracted. Oh no, he's just making a joke. Okay, cool. All right, rookie eight stepping out of the pin, freeing up the horsey. To free up the bishop, to free up the rook, to free up my my uh, my hands to better resign with, I guess. Maybe you walk your king to e8. Sorry, haha. Aha, a tihi. A tihi. Um, queen d4. Yeah. Uh, all right. Daniel queen trade. This this was the moment. I re I remember this. I was I remember thinking like. Something about like, ah, uh, like maybe I like offer a queen trade somehow. Like he's a kid. Like they don't know how to do end games. End games are fun, even though I'm down upon. Like maybe I can hold this end game. And then like he does all the heavy lifting for me by just offering me a queen trade. And yeah. of co of course, queen takes d4 is automatic. Automatic. Um, we always trade queens against children. Because um, they don't know the value of uh, of the pawns yet. They don't. They don't yet understand pawns because they still are one. That's their system. They haven't grown up into a piece yet. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just yeah. making shit up. Okay. Yeah. That's. Don't even worry about it. All right. So okay. You you might be thinking like oh like he's up material trading good um and while this is semi true there's a lot of pieces on the board still and it's only a pawn it's not like he's up like actual material um like meaning like an exchange or a piece or something yeah this is holdable my pawn structure is is solid i guess um 
the two biggest pawn problem. Islands. Two pilot, two pawn islands. This is true. Um, the the thing is, I'm still extremely underdeveloped, and he has a pass pawn in the center. And one would argue that his pieces are all more active than mine. So this is a lot of things in the con uh, column, and not many things in the pro. The only thing in the pro column is that I'm playing a kid. Um, so we will see if it's enough. But knight c5, we make a threat. Subtle threat. Time, time important. Yeah. In positions such as these. You both so have if, 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. T that time, but also like momentum. Um, if there's anything that you can do when you have a shitty position. If you can make a move that does two things at once, two or more things, like that's what you that's defending like Petrosian. Um, active defense is the best defense, as they say. So first we activate our knight. Okay. We 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 make him make kind of a weird looking move. Yeah, rook a three was a bit weird. Yeah, I mean maybe fans just wanted rook a d one. Yeah. Seemed normal to me. Um, it's one of those things that it's hard for me to explain, but rook a3 just looks weird. Um, yes, aesthetically. I, yeah, and that's... It's hard to explain why that matters, um, but it does. And it's just a very cowardly move, I think, because it's over-defending the square that doesn't need defending really I mean just like try and hang on to your a pawn and you're fine yeah but now we develop our bishop we activate our bishop and he's showing like a lot of concern over this b3 square so we add a little more pressure there yeah and pawns are dumb because the more times you push a pawn up the board the weaker it gets because there's more space behind the pawn to attack it from. And every time a pawn moves, it creates a weakness. But, like, you know, when, when the pawns are all in a row on the second rank, they can only be attacked, like, they can't really be attacked. Like, they're very, very strong. But you move the pawns up to the to the, to the third like, rank or whatever, and they're, they're violently weak. Violently weak. Mm -hmm. So, we do a bit of inducing a pawn push, and now the b-pawn is backwards. And once the b-pawn falls, the a-pawn is soon to follow. We play knight b3. We make, we, we make a little threat on the rook, forcing one of his moves, uh, his active pieces to move again, instead of making a useful move. We, yeah, we you prepare... Sorry, go ahead. You're blitzing out these moves. That's also it, an important part. I'm blitzing them out because they're sort of automatic. Like I, th th this, exactly. the nice thing is that my position is bad but simple. Yes. So but I don't have to think. Momentum. Right. Momentum. Yes. Yes. So important. The last piece but, I have to activate is my rook on a8, and that's easy. Yeah. So like he gets the pressure now. Of yeah. Almost having to defend. While it, up a pawn. It is. It's funny. Like, the stress of maintaining a good position is almost like defending, um, yes. especially in a complex one where your opponents, like, the pieces are so bad, they only have one good move each, so they don't even have to think. It's just like, okay, I just yep. play, play my forced move, and then you have to think. Yeah. Like, And unfortunately, that means that the kid probably just beat himself, and I didn't really do much. But, uh... Well, I don't know. I think some outplaying was done later on. Yeah, we will, we'll see. Fans will see. No spoilers. No spoilers, no burst. Now, my knight on b3 looks kind of, uh... Goofy. Sus? Like, it makes me slightly uncomfortable how I have no squares and it's just being defended by another piece. Yeah. Knights this game were not the best. Knights were not thriving. Yeah. Um, but, alright. We do a bit of, of rook trading. 
Yeah, get the last piece into the game. Last piece into the game, trading off White's most active piece that's not even that active anymore. Um, yeah. And ga gaining the D file regardless. Like, if you take on D8, I replace it with a rook on D8. I have the D file. If you move the rook, I have the D file, so you're just kind of fucked. Um, and at this point, like, we White went from having, like, one weakness to, like, three or four. Um, yeah. The knight on the c3 feels loose, the, the b pawn. Yeah, and, like, activity is non existent almost. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because it doesn't feel like White did anything wrong. White responded to the black's moves, but all of a sudden yeah. the position is just not fun anymore. Well, maybe rook a3, honestly. Like, just yeah. doubling up at first and giving the pawn back. And rook a it's true, rook a3 is a bad move, but it's it's almost the more logical one because it's safer. It, it feels safer because you're over-protecting your A-pawn, you're over-protecting the B-pawn. But you can't just play defensively when you, ha when you have an advantage. Um, yeah. You don't win like, by defending. Yeah. It's true. Very true. And then my opponent was like, fuck, I should have played knight d5 like 10 moves ago. I'm mad. <laughs> I, I had to go backwards like three moves in a row. I had to. I keep having to respond. Fuck you. I'm putting my knight in the center. Fuck you. That was what my yeah. opponent said to me. Everyone looked around in the tournament hall. It was really weird. Um, you couldn't hear that on the VOD because it was muted. But everyone was shocked. Um, especially me. But fans knight went wild. Fan fans did go wild. Like. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? The whole playing hall went wild. And this is clearly a psychological move because knight d5 was key a long time ago, and you can you can tell that psychologically my opponent is struggling and he's living in the past because he's yeah. like he regrets. So at this point, I was pretty pretty fucking confident that I'm not losing this game and maybe even winning it. Um, so his idea is that he's he's attacking my knight now, but the problem is, like, I take it, and then he takes it, and, and then I- and then I take a pawn, and now I'm no longer down a pawn, and my yeah. pieces are all more active, and he has a weak B pawn, and I'm attacking his rook, and I'm attacking his yeah. rook. Yep, so this is, like, hacked. As they say. It's true. It's quite the throw. This is from- no, not from the Colorado Open, this is from the Denver Open, which I know was a long time ago, but what can you do, honestly? Um, so my opponent just, like, kind of gifted me, like, a great position out of nowhere. Um, but I wouldn't just blame it on dumb luck, I would blame it on, um, understanding having a better understanding of the position um and understanding why my position is so bad so i know how to fix it i guess yeah. well my opponent had a good position but he didn't really understand what to do with it perhaps yeah. he sort of just curled up and hoped to win because he won a pawn yeah, or maybe even like just wanted to draw. Like, who knows um, where yeah, his mind was at? Because of because of the rating difference, it could be <sighs> rating difference. Opponent's sugar rush ran out at this point. Yeah. Um. Okay, but Rook B one. Like he wants to at least try to hang on to the D file. He doesn't have much to live for at this point, so at least yeah. he has that. Um. This bishop F five. E pawn key, it's true. Um, yeah, let's point out where my winning chances are, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. The backwards B pawn. Oops. The backwards B pawn. The fact that the light square bishop is shut out because of my, my pawn on E4, that's doing a lot of restricting. And also, potentially, rook D3 um, creating a pass pawn or just like doubling and sitting on his face. 
or getting behind the pawns. Like, I just have so much activity all of a sudden. Yeah. And he just has to sit there. Yep. Lower rated player winning, tries to force a draw, ends up losing instead, a tale as old as time itself. Truly. That's Truly. Good. You're gonna... Relatable. My, my, uh, my, uh, round... My round three game? Yeah. It's like this on, on, on it's meth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We cook meth over here. You played the Denver Open, missed the Colorado Open. Same. This happens at all levels. It's true. Round two sub goal. <laughs> Gelato gets me. Like, yes. gets Every it. Every round sub goal. Every. Yeah. Monetize everything. Yeah. Um. Okay, but but White is going to have a difficult time now, unfortunately. Um, H4 is like... What else? I don't know. Like, I don't know. What else does he play? It's true. Like, he like just shuffles his rooks around. Like, it's it's not good. Um, yeah. I played King G8 automatic because in the end game, kings go in the center. And, like, I don't know if I want to play rook D3. I don't know what I want to do with my pawns. Like, I don't know, but I'm not thinking about it because I'm spending three to seven minutes on every move. King G8 is automatic, just play it. Um, rook B to C1, trying to come in as they say, although it's going to be difficult without giving up everything. Yep. And now we send rook D3. Hmm? And this is annoying so what as shit. If he takes the show for the fans. We will show for the fans. So if he takes it, he gives me a pass D pawn that's already supported by a bishop. Um, that's impossible to attack from behind. And if like, he attacks it from the front, if he attacks it from the front, then like, uh, I mean, I just play it slow, I guess, with rook e two, d two, rook d one, or even, or even like. Or even just go go and get the B pawn. Honestly, like you could play. Yeah. It. That could that could be a better way, I think. Because maybe he's could, in time or like has some bishop f one stuff. After rook e two. Yeah, bishop f one could be annoying. Let me think for a minute. Um. Rook d one. Hmm. It is tricky. I didn't do my homework here. Me neither. Okay, like maybe. Rook D1 fans speculate about. I don't know. I think going for the B pawn makes sense. But you maybe first go B6, right? Maybe maybe first go B6. I I wish there was a way to hang on to my D pawn like permanently. Um. Yeah. Maybe one day. S well, he needs to spend time to take. Yeah. And maybe Rook C8. With Rook D8. Yeah, rook c8, and then you have a... Yeah, or just a rook d8, but then he takes on b7. Yeah, like, one tempo again. If we had one tempo, position winning. I feel like, like, I'm, I'm like, annoyed with this. Yeah, it is rough. Maybe I over-evaluated my position a little bit. Um. Well, you're still pushing here. Yeah, we could just march king, but like, I don't know. No way to get bishop c2. That's a bit... I would love to. Like, if you have any suggestions for how to do that without just allowing bishop f1 and taking. Yeah. Enough said. Yeah, I mean, okay, like, maybe I just I just do a bit of b6 and then bring king in. Like, it's true. I wish I could keep, like, I don't know. b6, rook d8, yeah. then king march. Yeah, so basically what I said. Um... Sometimes there's no like really exciting win. You just you just gotta address the threats and then bring King in. That's chess. Yeah, I thought it was also winning. I guess I. I think it is winning. Just slowly. Um, okay, but surely. Okay, alas. But he decided against this because I think it's natural to to do so. Yeah. Um. But now I have active rook and. Uh, I don't know, like, this is basically saying that the White King will never be active. Just ever. Um, so. 
socket. Um, okay, and then I went backwards, d4. Okay, but I'm attacking the b-pawn. Well, yeah, and like, rook b3 would allow rook c4. Yeah, so I'm accurate as hell, basically. And now, yeah. rook b1 falls into e3, perhaps. Uh, fans speculate, yeah. That is why... Yeah, and if b5, then I just, like, win shit, I think. Like, put... Again, forcing the, the pawns forwards to create even more weaknesses behind them so they're easier to attack. And eventually forcing them onto the same the same rank where they're picked off. Uh, so my opponent played rook c5, which I remember thinking at the time was like, that looks stupid. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's a good try. Yeah, um, he's still groveling. Yeah, he's fighting. Like, he's not doing yeah. a very good job, but he's fighting. And that's a good quality to have. Yes. Just gotta do your end games better. Exactly. Um, idiot dropped the pawn on b4, that's right. What an uh, idiot. He, he attacked my tall pawn, though, so I should probably do something about this. Um, I think bishop g6 was played with little thought. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me, five minutes, actually. Five minutes, so on the, on the uh, <laughs> higher end of how much I was thinking. Yes. Um. And what else? What else? Like. G6? Like, what was I thinking about? It's weird. Maybe <laughs> some fucked up E3 stuff. Maybe this? It doesn't work. That's stupid, though. Oh, maybe fucked up E3 stuff. That's just like me to do that. Doesn't do anything, though. I don't think. I don't think that was it. Alright, Bishop G6. Strange move to think so long on. Seems automatic. Um, yeah, but I see lines about bishop d7. Maybe bishop d7. You're correct. This is the thing with an inexperienced rook endgame player, though. Like, he's doing things with his rooks, but he's putting them on such weird mo weird squares, and they, he's just, they just look weird. You know? Heinous. Heinous. They ha Absolutely. There's no feeling for rook endgames whatsoever. And that's just something you get by by doing like studying them, I guess. But yeah, it does suck. Like if you've never looked at rook end games and you get a bunch of rook end games, like I would see why you think end games suck and why you hate them because it's not something that you can just easily logic your way into understanding over the board. Like you just kind of have to know the ideas from seeing them. Yeah, it's patterns. That's chess. Patterns, but also multi layered stuff yeah it's def it's it's more complicated than that there's like but but i just mean con like you learn so many concepts by studying rook end games yeah um and then you're like your mind like just is like what there's there's that much more chess to learn and it's true rook end games are a whole other game inside of chess that's like equally difficult um yep. But very worth it if you want to invest time into it. Highly recommend. Very satisfying to win. <laughs> Equal. It's true. Game. It's true. I do a lot of that. I would. I don't know. know if there's a better feeling, honestly. There's not. I guarantee you, there's not. Um. But okay, rookie seven. I defend the b pawn. I prepare for doublage. I prepare for bring king in. I don't know if that, any of that's true, honestly. I don't think any of it was. But um, basically, I just had to defend my b pawn, and I'm trying to make it a multi-purpose move, but it wasn't. Yes. Well, also enabling bishop e8. Actually, that's what I want. That's what I meant. I remember it had something to do with the e8 square. It's yeah. true. Because his rook is so silly. It's a, it well, looks. Almost look how so dumb. Cute. Yeah. Rooks belong behind pawns. Not in front. Like, I mean, I, I guess it's, I don't know, like sometimes I guess you, it can go in front of the pawn if it's your pawn, I guess sometimes, but it just, look at it, it looks weird. Like that's, I can't even really explain it, just look, look, look at it. Yep. Looks bad. Alright, Rook C1, he's trying to, he's trying to do stuff, um, but alas, Bishop E8, <laughs> but alas, indeed, indeed. Um, okay. We do. The rook is not is not super happy. It's it doesn't have like. 
Brooks open files, not open ranks. It's It has this annoying job of babysitting, and it doesn't have any squares to keep doing that. Um, and the rooks are actually getting less active the more they move. Like a like a Chinese finger trap. That's okay. my that's my metaphor. Okay. Okay. Diagonals are complicated. Rooks understand the simple life. Pawn behind pawn. It's, it's exactly yeah. right. So rook c8, pinning my little bishop man. King f7, automatic. Um, rook f5, check. And I remember. I think I thought a long time here. Or around Check. this place, I was thinking a lot. Yes, four minutes. Four minutes. So four that's minutes, a lot. Four minutes, bishop e8. Four minutes, king f7. So yeah. Eight minutes into moves is a lot for the blitz. Time and then on on this this move though, how much do I think like after king f7? Oh, after king f7, not much. Really? Like you you insta play the next move, then a minute. Oh, then so seven I, minutes. After, I, like in two moves, you're gonna think for seven. I imagine I thought about what I was going to respond to rook f5 with here. Then, if I spent four minutes on king f7, which is automatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a weird like a habit. Like it's it's hard to break doing things like that because it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me. Like one move ahead, like it yes. doesn't really matter because um, I feel like I see the position clearly enough in my head. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. But king f7, um, king g6, king e6 bad, probably because of like bishop h3 or something. Yes, <clears throat> exactly. Um, which I part. guess I shouldn't have to calculate, it just looks bad. Rook takes e8 was a real threat there. What? I'm thinking, I, guess I don't know what he means. But what do you play instead of king f7? Like, what do you suggest? Um... I mean, what does Shaq Sume say? I'm waiting because I'm curious. If we lose b7, white has nice endgame, I think. So we just do a bit of exchange sack for the very advanced a and b pawns. Uh, perhaps I thought about that. Um, probably gonna be only a an a pawn. Probably, maybe. Probably, so. unless he just like takes, plays or bishop f1, just... and then takes. Yeah, he could just push the b pawn. That looks pretty miserable, I agree. So maybe... Yeah. I mean, even if that's not a thing, King F7 is automatic, so it's just weird that I thought exactly. so long. Uh, but maybe well, I was just scared seeing ghosts. Yes, could be. But... Okay, so King G6. He gives me a little check -a rooney And then I remembered the Dina Bell and Kaya game, where he put his king here and got mated. Even though the position is n nothing, nothing alike, but like he did a king walk and it was weird. Yep. And I and I got like a little flashback. Um, king f six, and now and now rook f. You can't repeat because then I take your rook. That's chess. Um, b five, because the b pawn was attacked, and yep. at least he's going forwards. Like yes, that's what chess is all about. If you're going forwards. You're doing something right. That's what a lot of people well, think, and then they play knight g4. That's their favorite move. Well, so both sides have bishops, right? Mm -hmm. Light squared bishops, right? Right. In which color is the square b5? Light square. Yeah. So. Do we want to fixate the pawn? The That's a good game? idea, honestly. Maybe. Because, like, when you have bishop and two pawns versus bishop, like, you want to advance the pawns, uh, like, if it's opposite color bishops, um, on the, the, the color of the opponent's piece. Fuck. Hold on. Yeah. I, I guess if you both have the same colored bishop, it doesn't matter as much. Yeah. I just want to fixate a pawn. Me too, honestly. Maybe we play b6. Yeah. Here's where you That's thought. That's what I thought. Minutes. Yeah. 
Is B6 a good move? I think so. Cool. Um, it could just be, like, worrying a lot about... <laughs> like bishop f1, but it doesn't work. Oh! Wow. Well, Fixing it on the, on the square and then pinning the bishop, like, seems yeah. like a good plan if I can get that to happen. Yeah, I was gonna say you were leaving out, like, c6 check, but, like, like this bishop is doing so much. It is, and it looks dumb because it's on the back rank, but it's... It's contributing a lot. It's actually godly, yeah. Yeah. It's also preventing this. Like, this rook is actually very close to getting boxed out. Yeah, like, rooks... Like, his his rooks are so weird. Like, why are they so weird? Makes me uncomfortable. But... Alright, b6 takes takes. Yeah. I feel like I remember he fought a long time on taking, but... Yeah, he was... He was already low in time, so he thought for like a minute or two. The rooks of a man who wants to draw, it's true. You had 20 um, minutes, he had 8 minutes. <clears throat> so I had 20 minutes and he had 8 minutes? Yes. You were That's up awesome. Time. Wow. Look at me go. I think it's a, it's a first first uh, time ever in a YouTube. It was. It was. Like, I remember at the time I was like, wow, this is like so relaxing. Like... <laughs> I just yeah. like put pressure on and like don't think like this is this is the is life this yeah this is how NMs play maybe I'm an NM now <laughs> yeah True. um okay rook b8 we do a little tickling the b pawn um mm -hmm. rook d6 we keep our our stuff on dark squares so that it you know I don't hang a tactic so I don't have to think um rook c8 I don't know like he does a bit of shuffling, perhaps. What else does he do? Yes, g6. Yeah, I don't. Uh, g6. I wonder what the point was. I feel like it was some sort of prophylaxis against something, but I don't remember what. Was it a just sort of a zugzwang? Maybe, but maybe like making square for king, like just in case. Oh, you can't right, might be right. I just remember thinking like. Yeah, that was a good move, but I have no idea what the point was to it. This is why we analyze our games, you know, after after the, the game. Yeah. Instead of two months later or whatever. Um, but, but okay. I, I, like, what does he do? Yeah. Rook c4. Like he is just kind of shuffling shit around and making random threats, and it's just like completely aimless. Like this is somebody who really needs to do some rook end games. Like. Yeah. It it's it shouldn't he's just making it way too hard on himself. Like this rook is so bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, also, but like, now the has been sitting like here the whole game. Yeah, and he did that to himself. Like he just like cemented it in in a tomb and it's just it's yep. just there. He put that bishop in a sarcophagus. It's a good one. Um all right, rook d1 check. We weaken the, the the second rank, and then we put a rook on the second rank. That's our system. And now it's like, how the fuck do you defend that? I mean, you can go back, and like, I just improve my rook, and maybe maybe I do a bit of swinging around, like with one of these squares. Turn them around. Mhm. Mm it's true. And and the rook is so stupid. Like, both of his rooks are so stupid they can't do anything about it. So I feel like black is already winning here, but maybe I'm ro I'm really overvaluating things, but... Fans are unaware. Th this just has to be winning, I think. Because yeah. bishop takes e4, like, I'm giving up my e-pawn, but the king is so unbelievably weak and my rooks are so unbelievably yeah. active that it's it's hard to imagine white holding this. Especially um, because it's with check, it's just so bad. Yeah, it it all it all comes with tempo, like fast. It's all fast. It's very fast. Um, so I played king g seven. That's interesting. What is so wrong with just rook e two? Oh, it trades. He forces a rook trade. Oh. I'm good. Maybe I saw this shit coming. You saw this? Yeah, that's why it you was. Played G6. Oh, that's why it was prophylaxis. I see. Oh. Fans uh, tired. Fan yeah, yeah. But at least like I was thinking a little bit, like 
Why yeah. didn't he trade you, rooks? When could he have traded rooks? You played g6 in four minutes, though. So it's like not even. Yeah, so I must have seen this because this was all very automatic. Like. Yeah, but then you spend like five minutes on uh, rook d1. So fine. Yeah, and at this point, it's the game sort of plays itself. Like you just round up the pawn and activate your little rooks. Yeah. And you take this, and I remember thinking a while here, trying to find the most accurate win. Um, and I was... It sucks, because it's like, it just feels like there should be a mating net here, and I couldn't find one, and I was getting yeah. frustrated. Yep. Um, but I ended up just winning this rook, and then giving him checks until he, he resigned. Yeah. That's a good strategy. But we, it's we're... nice when they resign. Yeah, better late than never, I guess. True. But it's just so interesting because he didn't make any blunders, like notable, like obvious blunders. I think. Stra strategic blunders. Yeah, he made many, 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 many inaccuracies and a few mistakes. Um, yeah. But none of and them also... were obvious. Yeah, but probably talking himself out of ninety five biggest mistake. Yeah, because it came back to bite him. Like because he he he, re he had regret. Yeah, and then he made a bad decision just purely yes. out of regret. Yep, and like you have to capitalize on on your peace activity. Like you work so hard for it, and then you you go defense mode. Yeah, and it's just tough when, especially when you're playing someone like pro like that you've lost too many times before, yeah. And like, you just you just maybe he's thinking about raiding too much, but his position oh, was great. Yeah. He just needed to put in a little more effort mm -hmm. into calculating the moves. I know he saw. Yeah, exactly. But so, it's a very good good lesson. I put the bishop in a sarcophagus. Best moment. True. That's a, new that new a new uh, thumbnail and title. New saying. No yeah. more gimps to. Just needed to read. get good. Oh.